Acts of the Apostles. <clears throat> a Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up, ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time, and said to the Sanhedrin, fellow children of Israel, be careful what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Theodos appeared, claiming to be someone important, and about 400 men joined him, but he was killed, and all those who were loyal to him 
were disbanded and came to nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean at the time of the census. He also drew people after him, but he too perished, and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men, and let them go. For if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. They were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged, ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismiss them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And all day long, both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching or proclaiming the Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Jesus said, have the people sit down. 
Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took those loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were sitting down. He also did the same with the fish. When they had had their fill, Jesus said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected the fragments and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign that Jesus had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I've made the point frequently, and I'll say it again today, so often in Scripture, the people that we meet in our readings, especially in the New Testament, so often those people are prototypes of ourselves. Now you have to understand, I think, our inclination, honestly, is that we expect biblical people, Old or New Testament, to be holy from their birth. When the reality is, they're as human as you and I are. They had parents just like you and I did. They had their ups and downs in life as you and I did. The twelve weren't born as apostles. They grew into that. And the same is true of so many people who we meet in Scripture. There's a piece of ourselves in them when we look more deeply. And that's the mystery of Scripture. That's the beauty of Scripture. If we read Scripture and see only stories about other people, we're missing the impact that Scripture intends to have on us, which is to show us a piece of ourselves. So look, for example, in today's first reading at Gamaliel. He was very cagey. He was careful enough not to commit where he himself stood. He advised the Sanhedrin to be careful of the apostles, but he really didn't say anything about himself, whether he stood with the apostles or whether he disagreed with them. Careful not to take any committed action because if he followed his inclination and supported the apostles, then he knew that he faced the same fate as they faced, which was to be flogged and to be harmed for his belief. So to avoid that, he just didn't really commit himself. And I would propose for us that we just consider in our own lives how often we take a careful position so as not to put ourselves in a position where others can say, oh, you're just one of those holy rollers or you're just one of those socially active people or you're just one of those do-gooders. To avoid that, we just don't commit ourselves. And in not committing ourselves, we avoid the very opportunity that we have to witness to Jesus Christ, to witness to God's goodness in our life. We have missed the very opportunity that we have to allow the Spirit to work through us, to use us as instruments for God in our world, because we want to be cautious. We want to be careful. We want to make sure that we're not judged falsely 
for our good works. So we play it safe. Contrast that to the apostles themselves who were discredited, who were flogged, who were put out of town, and who surprisingly loved it. They rejoiced. They jumped for joy that they were mistreated because that convinced them that God was working in them. They knew that their happiness and their power to follow through on what Jesus expected them to do, the power to do that was the power of God in them, and nothing brought greater joy to them than that. So they rejoiced. They cooperated with what they were asked to do, the apostles did. And we see their cooperation reflected in today's gospel. After Jesus blessed the barley loaves and the fish and distributed them to the crowd gathered around him, the apostles and probably some other helpers around in that large group gathered up the fragments. Not because it was important to clean up the site, but in a much more significant way, they wanted to make sure that everything that Jesus had done for them in the multiplication of those loaves and fish, everything that Jesus had done for them was used and nothing was wasted or thrown away because God gives us in such abundance that we dare not take it for granted or misuse it or waste it or throw it away. The apostles were cooperating with what Jesus had asked them to do in sharing the fullness of his love and his care with others in gathering the fragments. In that sense, the apostles personify for us the challenge that we face to see the goodness of God in our own lives, to see the bounty of God's goodness in our own, own lives, to see the overflowing goodness of God that expresses itself to us every day, and to make sure that we appreciate it and use it to the full, not wasting even the smallest fragment of the goodness of God, because it comes as gift. There's always something in Scripture for us to look at and to measure ourselves on that particular characteristic. Whether today we look at Gamaliel in the Acts of the Apostles, or look at the Apostles' behavior in the Gospel itself, or whoever we look at, or whatever reflection comes to us, the point is, Scripture is there, and those biblical persons are there to help us reflect on and enrich our lives, and through them to see what God is doing in our own lives, what challenges God puts before us, and the bounty of God's goodness to us every day. When we take that kind of look at Scripture, we can't help but walk away from the Scripture readings any day, Easter season or ordinary time of the year. We can't help but walk away any day from the reading and the listening to scriptures without saying, as we say during this Easter season, Alleluia. We rejoice along with the apostles.
wonders of God are manifest in our lives. We pray now that God will give us the vision to see his presence each day, to be appreciative of his presence, and to use his love in our service to one another. So church leaders, may God embolden them as a shepherd the faithful, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may God's spirit of peace move them in carrying out their responsibilities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may Christ, the divine physician, bring them healing and consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those gathered for this <coughs> uh, Eucharistic celebration and for our family and friends, may God open our hearts to the grace offered through the Holy Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our young people will be guided by the Holy Spirit to find their vocation in life that God wants for each of them and that those called to service in the church will have the courage to follow that calling. <clears throat> Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in medical research <clears throat> uh, looking for a vaccine and uh, medical help for those suffering from the COVID-19 virus pandemic, for those suffering from it, <clears throat> and for all those helping those who are afflicted, uh, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For, for our beloved dead, may they experience the fullness of God's love and mercy in his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Loving God, your goodness overflows in the lives of each one of us. You care for us as a loving father. You guide us safely through life. You lift us up from our sinfulness, and you call us to the glory of your eternal kingdom. Keep us on your path each day of our lives. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to Almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, accept in compassion these offerings of your family, so that under your protective care, we may never lose what we have received, but rather attain the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to acclaim you, Lord God, but especially during this Easter time to praise you yet more gloriously. 
when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases offering himself for us, but rather he defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more. He is the lamb once slain who now lives forever. Overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts singing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. church spread throughout the world bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope with Stephen our Bishop and with all the clergy remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection remember all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on all of us that with the Blessed Virgin Mary the mother of God with Saint Joseph her loving spouse with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son Jesus Christ through him, with him, in him, almighty God, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the advent of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord's peace be with you always. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Please join me in this prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, keep safe those whom you have saved by your kindness, so that redeemed by the passion of your Son, Jesus, we may rejoice in his resurrection, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us.